Varmt välkomna till Småbolagsdagarna och nu switchar vi raskt över till engelska för nästa presentation kommer att ske på engelska. I vill säga a warm welcome to Mr. Luis Gomez. Are you with us? Hello. Good morning. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. You are the CEO of AEC Clyde Space. Uh, uh, Indeed. Where are you situated at the moment? I'm I'm in Glasgow, where I've been for the last three months. Okay, yeah. In lockdown. Are you stuck so. there? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm looking forward to your presentations. Uh, so I'm leaving uh, the screen for you and uh, talk to you in a little while about uh, some some questions and answers regarding your company. Welcome again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, to actually let me explain a little bit uh, what we are doing at AAC Clyde Space. So we we are a company. We are based in Sweden, in Uppsala. Uh, we started life as an AAC Microtech. Um, in 2018, we acquired Clyde Space, that was a, a satellite company uh, based in Glasgow. And, uh, and since then, we have uh, merged the two companies, and we are now AAC Clyde Space Group. We offer turnkey solutions from mission design to in-orbit operations. So we, we build from components, from we design our own components, our own, our own onboard computers, our own solar panels, uh, batteries, and then we integrate those into making satellites. Uh, and we operate in the one to 50 kilogram range um, as well as supplying subsystems for third parties. And so we have, we have a wide range of customers worldwide uh, using our subsystems. We've got two production facilities. So we work in Uppsala where we specialize in uh, mostly two uh, types of uh, subsystems. So power systems and, uh, and onboard computers. Uh, we, are very, we are very successful with those onboard computers and power systems from Uppsala. And in Glasgow, we do a range of uh, what we call CubeSat electronics, and also satellites. So we integrate them into our own satellites, usually CubeSats, uh, a few a few, uh, few kilograms, so five to 20 kilograms um, CubeSats that are then sold to a variety of customers. We have been operating for many years in space. We, of the 1,500 or so small satellites launched since 1998, you'll find parts that AC Clyde Space has built on many of those satellites. Uh, be it a battery, be it a small uh, power, power pa uh, solar panel or a computer. So we have done quite a lot. We have been present in many of these satellites. We have a long experience, both AAC, Microtech and Clyde Space, of supplying the space industry with high quality, reliable subsystems. Our growing order backlog uh, has grown up to, to the end of quarter one from uh, the beginning of 2018, uh, or from the end of 2018 uh, to 173 uh, 173 percent to 183 million uh, sec, and um, showing how this market is growing, and and a lot of that backlog comes from our growth in uh, satellites. So we are building more satellites. We are now moving from just supplying subsystems to supply missions, and and we are actually and we are actually um, moving more towards that side of things, of the market. So our financials. Um, they have been improving. So our revenue on quarter at the end of quarter one, 2020, uh, was substantially higher than last year, uh, showing an improving situation. Our EBITDA has not grown as much as we wanted, but we are making progress on that. Uh, we have said that our objective is to be EBITDA positive uh, next year in 2021. Um, and last year we we. We achieved 66 million uh, million sec, uh, but as I say, things have been improving this this first quarter, the first quarter of this year. Despite what's happening with coronavirus, we still managed to to actually grow our revenues when compared to one year ago. Uh, and we have a share uh, a share issue share issue. Uh, last year we raised uh, 82.5 uh, million sec, um, and we were over substantially oversubscribed. So. In terms of order backlog, our order backlog has been growing. Um, and as I said, this is very much down to satellite, to the growth in the satellite market. We continue to supply subsystems, uh, components that go into a variety of satellites all over the world. 
but the growth, the growth that we are seeing is now on the satellite side, on the platform, the full integrated platform. And this comes down very much to the fact that the market uh, is actually growing. So the market for this kind of uh, technology is estimated to be worth about $42 billion uh, from 2019 to 2028. Of course, this includes a variety of different sectors. Um, so this is the hardware manufacturers like ourselves. Uh, it includes the launcher business. It includes a lot of the, the, the downstream, the people that are using this data. Um, but the fact is we are operating in a growing market. And we, are, we have a global presence, so we operate all over the world. We supply very different types of customers from institutional to commercial customers, um, some of which are, are actually very well experienced or very experienced in using space technology. And, and we do this by using highly standardized, miniaturized high performance platforms and subsystems. So, so many of our subsystems, you can just plug and play them together and you can actually build a variety of different, different um, satellites for different applications. And as I said, we are aiming to actually reach a positive editor and a positive operational cash flow in 2021. We are, we are a team uh, comprised of people that have been working in the sector for many years. At the same time, we have a very uh, young and vibrant uh, engineering um, team. So, so we are actually bringing together the, the skills, the experience, but together with the uh, innovation and uh, the new ideas that the, the, market requi the market requires. And as I said, this is a market that is growing. So we, we expect an exponential uh, growth in the number of small satellites launched. CubeSats and slightly bigger uh, than CubeSats. And this is due to the fact that these small satellites can accomplish now tasks that in the past required much bigger satellites. And because they cost less and because they are much quicker to build and they cost less to launch, they are actually enabling a series of applications that if you were using one single very large, very expensive satellite, you could never afford. But now that you can actually do it with smaller satellites, uh, and with more of those, you can actually start operating large constellations. And this is groups of satellites that are then used to accomplish uh, 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 an application that requires uh, a distribution of satellites all over the Earth, low Earth orbit. And, and this has opened a whole new range of activities. So there are certain things around communications, Internet of Things, tracking of assets on the ground that really only became possible once you had these small satellites delivering these types of service. And what this meant is that many more commercial entities have started to come into this sector. So in the past, space was very much the, the, the preserve of large organizations and very large corporations. Uh, and what we have seen over the last 10 years is that more and more small companies great ideas are coming into the market and are actually starting to, uh, to, uh, to apply those ideas to, to actually make a business out of those ideas. And we have been working with a variety of those. So much that nowadays we are, what we are seeing is a little bit the opposite, is uh, large corporations, large companies with, with a big track record on, the, on using space and with experience of using much larger spacecraft, they are now coming to talk to us and saying, okay, we see that this sector is growing. We are very interested in your technology. And so we would like to actually start buying your satellites, your small satellites to do some of our applications. And, and, and this was in last year when we had Utilsat, one of the world's largest satellite operators coming to us and, and buying two satellites from us for uh, Internet of Things applications. Now, those satellites are what we call uh, um, and we call a uh, full, full a turnkey solution. And, and they build, and they are one of the products we, we supply. So we, we are offering, as I said, from small components. So we, you see a, in this slide, a, a picture of actually of many of our components that we supply. And we then also build them into full satellites, so into missions. And, and those can be just in terms of platforms. We can supply a platform to a customer that then integrates their payload, or they can, be, or we can actually do the entire turnkey mission for them. And that's what we are doing to, for, uh, for Utilsat. We, also, we are also doing something now that we believe it's, it's, a, it's a big change in the market. And we are seeing that as uh, one of the big 
growth opportunities in this market, and that is space as a service. So we are we are seeing more and more an interest of many of these companies, not in owning and controlling their own satellites, but actually just getting the service they require from space. And this allows them to focus on their business, on their core business, without actually having to have the infrastructure and the staff to actually control satellites. And as such, we are starting to offer space as a service. And uh, our first contract for that has been with Orcom last year, another large, um, large operator uh, of satellites in the world. And they decided we don't want to actually have to operate all these, all these satellites. So you guys, you build them, you design, you build them, you put them in space, and then you operate them, and you just give us the, the service we need. Uh, and this is a trend that we see continuing. We are seeing more and more people coming to us and asking us, can you set up a space as a service uh, business model? And, and our company is transitioning. So from being a subsystems and component supplier with some platforms and missions and a little bit of space as a service to becoming a much more subsystem still, still a big part of our business, but the growth is on the platforms and missions and space as a service. That's where we see uh, a lot of opportunity. And this is something that uh, it's, it's validated by the market. So we see, we see our customers more and more coming to us and asking us, can you actually set up these, these types of, uh, of deals? Just to give you a little bit more of information on what space as a service is. Um, so it's, it's a combination of missions. So we, we design and build and arrange the launch and uh, do the, the commissioning of a, of a satellite. And then we actually, uh, we, we actually manage that satellite, that service on behalf of our customers. So in the case of Orcom, what they do is they get a few messages every day, a large number of messages actually from AIS, from their AIS automatic identification of shipping um, terminals. So the satellite collects those and then downloads those to the, to the customer, to Orcom. It could be images. If we were doing that for an Earth observation mission, we could just actually deliver to the to the, the the service to the service user. We could just deliver them the images that they need. So it's 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 a powerful model because it allows um, customers, it allows users not to have to actually uh, think and worry about how to manage the space segment of their business. And, and that is becoming increasingly important because these large constellations require quite a lot of maintenance. They require actually a, a range of uh, ground stations. And it, and it is for a, a, a supplier like us, a manufacturer like us, it is fairly cost effective to actually operate many satellites at the same time. But if you're only operating a small constellation for yourself, uh, it, it can become less cost effective. So hence why asking someone like AC Cloud Space to take on that, that part of the, of the, the business. And this is part of our strategic agenda. So when I joined the company about a year and a few weeks ago, uh, so May 2019, um, we, we set out to actually consolidate our business. So we, we did quite a lot of work on the reduction of costs through introduce, introduction of standardized platform and subsystems. We focused very much on the Constellation customers and how do we actually uh, grow from just producing one, two satellites to, to large constellations. And, and we started by looking at m and options. We, we had some, we have some, some uh, there are some interesting opportunities in terms of technology and in terms of business model. So, so that was the first job and we continue to do that one. Um, we also looked immediately at improving. So we, we looked at uh, how to increase our production capacity. Uh, we needed more um, staff and so a bigger workforce with different skills, with more skills. So we have been doing that. We have been set, putting that in place. And all of these, of course, maintaining the high reliability, the quality and performance that we are known for. Uh, AAC Cloud Space has a long history uh, in, the, in the space sector. We have actually demonstrated good quality. We have re demonstrated reliability of our equipment and also performance, and we want to keep that. So that's, that's probably our, one of our unique selling points, and we like to actually make sure that whatever we do, we maintain those, those uh, qualities. And then, of course, we are looking at how to grow. So we are currently working on growing our production capacity from eight, roughly eight satellites a year to about 20. So this, we are talking about uh, satellites that are all slightly different. So they all require quite a lot of non-recurring engineering. 
so they take a bit, a bit longer than uh, if we were just building the same satellite over and over again. Because if, the, if we were building the same satellite over and over again, we probably could, could ramp up our production to about 100 satellites per year already quite easily. Uh, but if we are actually doing a, a variety of uh, satellites, we, we are actually uh, limited by the number of, uh, by the number of uh, engineering hours that you need to put to those, but we are increasing that capacity. We're also looking at geographic expansion. We have said many times that we see the US in particular as a, as a market of, uh, of uh, great interest for us. We are actually quite successful in the US market. We supply quite a lot of components and subsystems and satellites for commercial entities. But if we want to actually supply the, the, the more institutional markets in the US, we need to be present there. We need to have a facility there. And we are working on that. And we have said this many times. Uh, of course, we need to, to find the right deal. So we have looked at a variety of options from setting up a, a facility there to actually acquiring a company in the US. We have, we have looked in quite a lot of depth, but we need to do that in the right way. So, so we are looking quite carefully at, at the opportunities. And then of course, the growth, as I mentioned before, the growth path for the company is developing space as a service offerings. As I said, we, we, we see quite a lot of demand from the market for these kind of um, uh, offers, and we are actively working with customers on these. So our key milestones in 2020, um, we are finalizing our fully now test capability. Uh, we, are, uh, we are acquiring capability, uh, test facilities and test equipment that will allow us to actually do our tests in-house. We already do quite a lot of it, but uh, it, it allows us more flexibility, reduces our costs, and also uh, allows us not to be dependent in terms of schedule, not to be dependent of third parties. And we do enough satellites to actually justify having these capabilities in-house. We are opening a new satellite integration facility in Uppsala, uh, and this will uh, increase our production capacity by about 20%. We have the space, we have the facilities, we have the people, so it actually makes sense to, to use that. Uh, it reduces our need to, to expand um, to new uh, premises with all the associated costs. And also allows us a, a geographical distribution, so we, we can operate in different uh, territories, um, and, uh, and that sometimes has advantages. And as I said, we are growing our workforce. Um, so across the board by about 20%, um, we, we will be producing about eight satellites towards the end of this year. Um, and that requires a, a, an increase in our skill breadth, in our uh, skill base and manufacturing capacity. And we are also introducing our first iteration of the platform functional unit. Uh, you might have seen that we received the support of the Scottish government to develop this unit. This is a, this is a new highly standardized, highly flexible uh, satellite control unit. You can use it from, for one kilo uh, CubeSat all the way to probably 300 or even 500 kilo satellites. Uh, it's a very small unit, but extremely powerful and very configurable. So you can just by changing the software, you can reconfigure the way it works. And so, uh, it will allow us to very quickly uh, reconfigure our satellites without having to actually change uh, massively the hardware. And that is one of the, the reasons why, why satellites cost a fair amount of money, but also take time to build. And that is also one of the reasons why, for instance, we, we have limitations on our capacity, on our yearly uh, delivery of satellites is because we need to do quite a lot of changes when customers ask us for different uh, missions, for different kind of uh, applications. With something like the PFU, the platform functional unit, we can very quickly reconfigure the entire satellite to have a different payload, to have a different instrument, and to deliver a new uh, performance. And that is becoming increasingly more important as we see not only the communication sector where we are already quite, quite active and quite successful, but we are also seeing quite a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of demand from the environmental monitoring sector, um, all the issues around climate change, around environmental threats, and those payloads usually are more complex and require different types of satellites um, than uh, communication payloads. Um, not so much complexity in terms of uh, its inner workings, but in terms of the needs of the satellite. They require pointing, they require a series of, uh, of other capabilities. As such, I think the PFU will be a very important thing for the future. So as just key takeaways, um, the market for small satellites is growing. We are an established player and we are very well positioned to capitalize on the growth. Uh, we offer full end-to-end -end solutions and state-of-the-art uh, small satellites. 
to both industrial, commercial, and institutional clients. Um, and these offer quite a lot of opportunities for recurring revenues. And uh, we have quite a clear plan to grow both organically and through bolt-on acquisitions. That plan is for the next five years, and we are working on it very actively. So we just want to become the world leader in commercial small satellites. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, uh, for this presentation. Um, what would you say are the main risks for uh, your operation to come uh, to develop? Um, the main risks, the main risks uh, are always um, the the operation in terms of in terms of the the global market is we are always dependent on on the, the, the customer flow. So for instance, financial, big financial um, upsets in the market might actually uh, force some of the customers uh, in these big markets to delay their plans. We are not, we are not yet seeing that happening, um, but that is always a risk uh, that exists. Uh, there is also the risk of uh, new regulations, new, um, new demands on, on the sector. So I, think, I think actually those are very well controlled right now. Okay. Um, so, in terms of looking forward, I don't, I don't see a, a particularly risky. I, I see a growth path. I, I think the industry is growing, and I think the industry is actually quite buoyant, mm. despite the current crisis. And what do you think about the possibility or the risk that your customers will withdraw their orders uh, due to the, the COVID nineteen crisis? Well, so far we haven't seen we haven't seen that happening. Uh, okay. So far, we actually believe that that is not a. Uh, it's not, it's not happening. I don't know of, uh, of other uh, companies in the sector, but it has, it has happened, happened in other sectors, I think. But uh, yeah. And uh, your financial situation at the moment, uh, how would you describe it? You've done some, you've, you've taken in some money uh, recently, and uh, how is the. Uh, the financial situation, I would say, is stable. Uh, as a CEO, always, I would always like it to be better. Uh, I can't say it is bad. Uh, we are we are well financed. We we have taken measures uh, anyway during this period to, to actually uh, take cash flow, like uh, I think most companies did. Um, but we are uh, we are in a in a good position. I feel. So, for how long are you financed? Would you say? Well, we are financed. We are financed uh, for. The next the next few years, if we if we actually meet our plan, so we we have always been uh, we have always been have a long term plan. So of course I, I can't I can't uh, so no predict what the future holds okay. for us, but uh, I don't see I don't see a problem. You seem to be very it. positive uh, regarding the growth uh, in the market, but you're doing so many things. You are like detecting pollutions in the sea. You are helping. Uh, actors to improve their weather prognosis and uh, well you do a lot of things uh, but where do you see that the, what is the main uh, drives uh, in what uh, kind of uh, operations will you earn the most money would you say in the near future I, I, I would like to have a good crystal ball to tell me exactly where but um, yeah but I'm we, sure we, you've been talking to the customers you know who are the most uh, Eager we, we to cooperate. We, we see a great opportunity. We see a great opportunity still in the communications and the machine-to-machine -machine Internet of Things uh, environment. That's a that's a business vertical that uh, is growing very quickly. Yeah, and it's also a, um, a business vertical that uh, that has quite a lot of potential to grow further. Uh, could you be more concrete? Internet of Things could be a lot of things, but in what way could you uh, contribute there? We, we we can provide we can provide a lot of uh, monitoring of assets so so asset monitoring and tracking around the world uh, some of which can be ship tracking truck tracking we are doing that with orcom for instance um, but there are also lots of uh, other other uh, deals in the internet of things mm. uh, around monitoring for instance gauges in the rivers um, gauging uh, monitoring monitoring um, uh, performance of engines and uh, in factories so there are all sorts of activities, and, and in that sense, the, the space-based internet of things and the space-based machine-to-machine is a very, it's a very flexible platform. It allows you to try many different things. So you can, you can use it for cars, for autonomous dry, autonomous cars, autonomous ships, and uh, even autonomous planes in the future. So we see that as a, an area, and then we also see the environmental monitoring. So we, we are actually. 
we're actually seeing uh, quite a lot of interest in weather forecasting, in monitoring of the oceans, monitoring of uh, crops, pollution, forest fires. Yeah. And what about safety uh, in terms of uh, border controls and uh, other safety issues? Uh, what do you what can you say about this uh, sector? We 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 have a variety of applications. Again, some of these applications that are generic in nature also then can be applied specifically to border control. So there are certain aspects of uh, IoT, for instance, and machine to machine that allow you to to have detectors and sensors on borders controlling crossings, for instance. And you can do in remote areas where you it would be difficult to use, for instance, um, 4G or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you can actually you can actually do a lot of that work using space-based assets. And, and of course, we have a role to play in there. Um, I think there is a variety of solutions for that, and, uh, and we, we can definitely work on that. Would you say that the competition uh, is uh, about uh, at the same, same level in all those sectors that we talked about, or are you stronger in any of those uh, compared to your competitors, or are there competitors at all parts of the market? This we, we we operate in a diverse in a diverse um, environment, uh, and so we actually have competitors that are specialists in certain areas. We we tend to compete specifically with a few that in in the IoT uh, area and the machine to machine communications uh, and the broadband also. So I comparing comparing us to themselves, I, I like to think that we we have some competitive advantages and we have some uh, we have some success. I, I'm sure they will they would say similar things about their business. Um, I'm, I'm sure that we have, we have a good position in this market, uh, particularly in the communications. We, we are mm. one of the leaders when it comes to small satellites okay. and um, we should continue to. Uh, uh, and uh, looking at your sh main ho shareholders list, uh, do you have any comment on the structure of your composition of your shareholders? Uh, we, we are very happy with our shareholders. Um, they they have their own strategic objectives and uh, and so we we always aim to have a diversified uh, base of uh, shareholding and uh, and we are always very happy to actually support our shareholders and to see how we can how we can uh, support them in their investment. Do you have and any institutional so investors? We have some institutional investors. Uh, we have some institutional investors, um, uh, but they are fairly. Uh, they, they are not a large number of them, so although they do have big, uh, big shareholdings in the company. Mm. Um, but uh, it's they've got their own strategy, so so we we, we are aiming to, to actually. So listening actually to you, a variety I, of shareholders. I take it that there, you don't think that there's anything important things to to do regarding the shareholders or. You're not aiming to change it in any way. We are not. Uh, I, I, I think some of the shareholders have indicated that they would like to divest, others would like to invest. So, so we, it's, it's a, it's an, a normal day-to-day -day, mm. um, operation. But we are not, we are not aiming to to make big changes. Okay, but you are not a big shareholder yourself. But I understand. But you are a shareholder. <laughs> Or I am a shareholder. I'm a, shareholder. shareholder. Yeah, okay. I'm a growing shareholder. You're growing shareholder. That's good. Uh, any plans for the for the stock for change changing of the list or anything? Um, we have looked at the we have looked at actually changing to the main market. Uh, this is still uh, an objective that uh, that we in the long term that we we will analyze and will continue to to analyze. We we looked at it quite in quite some detail. Yeah. Uh, we could see that the costs associated with that didn't didn't actually justify yet a move. Um, so so this is something we are all continuously evaluating and, and depends on the growth of the company. So and, no uh, no new list, no no moving to the main market uh, in the in the near future. I take it. Uh, if the conditions improve, if we grow, and if we actually see that that is something we have done most of the work, we have actually done most of the work, the the, the groundwork in preparing for it. Okay. Um, uh, so, so we'll see how, how things evolve, but uh, it's uh, it's something, it's an ambition. It's something that we want to do, but uh, the conditions have to be right. Yeah. Um, and as always, it has to do with what is best for the business. Okay. Thank you so much. I hope we can have the possibility to come back to this question later on. So for now, I wish you all the best and thank you so much for your presentations. Thank, thank you very much.